Okay, yeah. Hi, I'm Tatu, and you, I already introduced myself with the Platinum sponsors speak, so I won't be messing around with that anymore. So my talk is about scrapping your query boilerplate with SpecQL. What is SpecQL? Uh, SpecQL is a very new library that I've been working on uh, this year, and it's the combination of closure spec and uh, PostgreSQL and the power, awesome power of Lisp macros. So the library introspects your uh, database at compile time to generate closer spec definitions for real tables and their columns, and then also retains runtime information about those tables so that you can do a generic fetch operations on those tables later. But more on that in a, in a bit. So some background why we're doing this. So YesQL or JSQL or HugSQL or other libraries are fine, and we're not trying to solve SQL so that you, don't have to, you wouldn't have to use it anymore. That's not the point of the library. But the point is that when you have multiple slightly different queries, there's duplication, or then you're having to fetch too much data. And adding dynamic where clauses leads to ugly null checking of bound parameters. And then you have to upkeep multiple versions of similar queries. So that is tiresome. So let's take an example here from. So let's see. We have a table called interesting table. We're just querying three IT foo, IT bar, and IT bass from it with these where parameters. So how do we make variants without duplication or selecting too much? So you could have set, select all IT that, that star. So you could select everything but that. Then you will that will be suboptimal for most use cases. And how do you add these dynamically? without causing duplication. Well, you could, I guess, Hux SQL has support, so you could template this, but I think it's undignified to write closure code in the comments of another language. So, and that example wasn't even talking about joins, so this is almost exactly the same query, except in SQL we have to join another table to get another column come to be a part of it. So, how do we do this in SpecQL? So I've, the main thing is the define tables macro. Now this is a pretty large macro and it requires a database connection at your compile time. So that's a caveat, but you should be using, you should have a test database at compile time for your spec, uh, for your unit tests as well. So you should already have that. But define tables takes a, takes the uh, series of vectors where the first argument, first element of the vector is the table name in Postgres, and the second one is the namespace keyword for the table. Every, everything is done in namespace keywords. No raw keywords anywhere. And then you can do additional definitions for columns. Here we're defining a virtual column organization, which is actually a join from another table. The join's taking a, the column in the other column in this database, the other uh, column in this table, the other table, and the column in the other table. And you can do remapping of column, uh, columns to other keywords here or do some interesting things like if you have a string-based enum enumeration in your database, you can transform it to keywords here. And so here's an example of fetching. So fetch is the generic fetch function in SpecQL. It takes a database connection. The database connection is anything that Clojure, Java, JDBC can use. So that's what you already use. And it takes a table to fetch from. And then it takes a set of columns to retrieve from the table. And these are all the namespaced keys for the columns. And these are all checked when you run it. So you cannot make an error of putting a wrong key here. SpecQL will tell you that there is no such column in this table if you put something wrong here. And then there's the map, where map, clause map, which, which can be just a map with the column name and the value to uh, compare it against. Or you can have operators like the last one, op in. And ba all basic standard operators in SQL are support like less than and equal and in and like and so on. And you can write your own. It's just a protocol. You can provide your own if you want to. And you can combine them with and and or and have different maps. And then the result is just you get, get back a sequence of maps with namespaced keys and values. And these are all, 
and the key, keys for the columns are, the, are specified as well. So we generate specs for the keys, so we know that IT foo must be an integer. That's useful later when we're inserting data. So what do we do with a join case? Well, that's very simple as well in SpecQL. You just add it as another column. You add a joint column as a vector in the column set where the first element is the virtual column to join on, and the second element is a set for the nested entity, what columns to fetch from that one. So and similarly, you get back a join uh, nested entity is available as a map. So what are the benefits of using SpecQL? Well, closure data, yay, that's good. No more mucking about with concatenating strings with libraries. A column set is just data and can be easily manipulated, even given as parameters from the front end, so you don't need to have any fancy GraphQL stuff. You just can, just can use closure data. And the where clauses are almost mostly data as well. There's just records that have a protocol implementation, so you can provide them as well. And now the key benefit, I think, is that every table and column has a single namespaced keyword definition. So when we have a large project we are using, so we have thousands of queries, and there are different people are writing different queries, and there's uh, someone uses order in the result set, someone uses order ID, someone uses ORD, and it gets confusing in a large-scale application. So with SpecQL, you always have one one single definition for every database column you have in your database. And namespace keys are the way of the future. Scratch that, they're here to stay, and everyone should be using them. And then another benefit from SpecQL is that it works with ClojureScript as well, because ClojureScript macros are evaluated on JVM, so you can use this in your CLJC files as well. So you can have the spec generation part on your front end as well, so you can have your validation in your form library use the database specs. So it knows that this uh, table should have these columns, and these are, these are the required ones, and it can do some uh, preliminary uh, specification of column constraints. So it knows that the types, so all database types is known, and then it can also check the length of string string-based uh, columns. And it works, works very well with the type document storage pattern, because PostgreSQL has a very good uh, way to define user-defined types, and a column cannot be, can also be a, an array of user-defined types, so you can have arbitrarily nested things in your columns, and it works with them as well. And then we provide not just fetch. Of course, we provide insert and update and delete, but the most interesting part is the upsert which was in Postgres 9.5. So we provide a generic upsert, which give it a, da a database and a entity to upsert and an optional where clause for if the con constraint check fails. And you don't have to do branching. That's very common use case. So we branch for if it's new, let's insert. If it's old, let's update. So those branches are gone. You can just use upsert. And it works with database views. So one thing I advocate many times is that you should use uh, your complex queries, you should put them in your database, use Flyway, use Racktime, some, some other way to maintain your DB state, but use your complex queries as views in the database and then spec them with SpecQL and query them. So status of the project, uh, the GitHub page still says experimental, we're at currently at 0 0.7 alpha stage, should be ready this year. But we're already using it in production in our uh, product uh, project called Haria, which is a large-scale road infrastructure project for the tran transportation agency. And there's no concrete promises before. The experimental flag is gone, but the API should only grow. You all seen talks about the API from Rich Hickey and Sao. So we're only growing, and the test suite is comprehensive and should not break. Only thing that I cannot promise is that some of the nested values, when you're doing multiple joins, the concrete types of the sequences are not promised yet. So 0 0.7 is coming at support for stored procedures, just for completeness sake, macro for dividing stored procedures as a function, better join handling. There's problems with uh, currently for having multiple bags, has many joins fetched at once. That's a problem with many ORMs, but I think I'm 
going to rewrite the join handling and get that fixed. So how to help? Please try it out if you're using PostgreSQL and report the rough edges. I try to provide good error messages for all cases. So try it out. We don't have time for an example, but yeah, thank you. OK, we have time for one question. Okay. Oh. Uh, just a quick one. Um, does, it, does the library defend against SQL injection attacks, the, the number one OWASP um, security vulnerability? And if, if not, yeah, do you uh, plan to add that? Yeah, regarding uh, injection attacks, everything is doing, done with bound parameters, so nothing is concatenated from strings. So you're safe from that, unless you do your own operators and then mark it up in them, there. So, but the standard operators all do things safely with bound parameters. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Thank you, Tatu.